Welcome back, I'm Captain Xavier, and today I am quite excited to be taking a look at the SBF by Gavin Fuzzy, the Spamf but Flywheel. This is his absolute masterpiece of a brushless flywheel blaster, select fire, it's got it all, and uh, I am looking forward to talking about it, but first, I am looking forward to flinging an inordinate amount of flo foam through it, so we're gonna go to the range. <laughs> right. We're here on the range now with the SBF. And uh, there will be some new targets soon. I got some new reactive targets. I just need to paint them up in my colors and uh, make some mounting systems for them. Stay tuned for that. But we're going to be doing some plinking with the Gavin Fuzzy SBF. I've got an 18 round mag in there. We're gonna do some semi-auto plinking and then we'll, we'll get to some, some high rate of fire stuff here in a bit. We hit the 25. Oh yeah. I hit a bottle. Oh, two for one. Round's complete. Another 18. I'm gonna get those bottles. A few less to plank. Let's reach out to the 50. I was aiming too high. It's got more, uh, more shoots than I thought. Let's, uh, let's try a larger capacity magazine. We got a Tachi here and uh, we're gonna pop it up to three round burst and just uh, have some fun plinking. Hit the 75. I can. I love it. Two rounds left. Fabulous. All right, put on the big one. You got the drum. See how well, if how smoothly it will feed. How well did I load the drum? Pop it up to full auto, and we are gonna do some plinking. Oh, what happened? Oh, did we? Oh, we got all kind of bound up. Do I have the, oh, <laughs> I turned the rate of fire down for full auto. It's only firing at 10 darts per second. Um, the burst is much higher. You can actually change them independently. I'll talk about that when we get back. That is a fun rate of fire. I enjoy that. All right, I do believe that is some sufficient plinking. Uh, this thing still runs smoothly as long as you tear, take care while loading it. Um, so uh, I'm enjoying it. Gonna have to reload it at least once more today. Anyway, let's go to the shop. Talk about this thing, all of its features, all of its gizmos. I probably don't even know all the gizmos in this thing yet, but I'm gonna talk about the ones I do know about. Right, let's get to some FIPS. Uh, I'm gonna do five shots at semi-auto with its at its max setting to give you some idea of what this thing can do. 130, 125, 137, 151, 142. The battery is getting a little low, so uh, it could probably do a little bit higher, but that uh, that is pretty schnazzy. That is acceptable at burst, um, at max. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, let's talk about features. Right, now for the fun part. I get to talk about this thing. So in my opinion, this thing is very much the spiritual successor to the FDL-3. There has been sort of a void in the hobby since FDL, Project FDL closed down. And this is the first blaster that I've seen that I feel really kind of kind of fills that void. Uh, it has select fire and it is wonderfully ambidextrous. It's got lever on both sides. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate that. Um, magazine release, likewise, is also ambidextrous. You can, there's no problem there. I, I appreciate an ambidextrous blaster. It also does have a very similar screen to the FDL series, um, though it does have a little bit more, well, uh, a little bit more graphic user interface. So there it is in safe. Flip the switch down, you go into semi, then burst, 
than full. And not only does it tell you in burst how many darts it's firing, so the burst is three, you can also set it for two. It also tells you the darts per second, because you can set the burst darts per second separately from the full auto. So I've got it set for 10 darts a second full auto and 20 darts a second burst. And then semi is obviously as fast as you can pull the trigger, um, which is pretty cool. It does also have your voltmeter, uh, and uh, the, the current power setting. So I have it set for 100%. You can turn that down uh, if you want. All of it is controlled through this little uh, switch, dial, turn it down. You can set the burst, the delay, um, hang time, spin down, what it considers to be low battery. Uh, it does in fact have UV LEDs. I'm gonna turn those on real quick. And then we'll go back down to semi. And when we pull the trigger, it lights up. UV LEDs light up to light up your glow in the dark rounds. Um, I will probably at some point next time uh, I'm filming towards the night, I'll plink some rounds downrange with that, which is pretty, pretty awesome. It is brushless, uh, but as far as I know, it's a single brushless cage. Uh, so pretty snazzy there. It does have a folding stock that folds like that. Uh, they, it also did come with just a stock attachment point cap. So you don't have this, it has a cap on it. Um, but I think I may have left that in the house. The battery housing is one of the cooler features. The way you get to it is you unscrew the muzzle and then this whole front section slides off and there is your battery. There's also another built-in feature is it does have a bearing scar and a ported barrel. The barrel ports out the bottom of the muzzle there um, to avoid barrel drag and to give you accuracy. It's got custom made aluminum flywheel cage. Just super, super cool. It does take a 4S LiPo and I was very pleased to discover that it takes the exact same size 4S LiPo as my Momentum does. So, I already had two batteries for the Momentum, and then this came with a battery, so now I have three 4S LiPos that are interchangeable between those two blasters, so that is pretty cool. There are all, all manner of add-on parts, so this magwell is actually an additional uh, expanded flared magwell that is simply bolted on. It can come right off. Uh, there is a smaller um, mag, is, er, mag release, if you prefer something a little bit more svelte, I like the beefy one, so I kept that. Um, sights, obviously, it's got Picatinny rail top and bottom and on the sides. I kind of wish there was Picatinny rail he uh, right here, but that would be an easy thing to add. I could just take that panel off and, and add some Picatinny rail there. Um, but I really, really like it. I need to get a really nice optic for it. I'm going to reach out to the various people that send me optics for review and get a really nice optic to put on this because I, I really want to, want to try dialing it in. Um, I don't know if it'll ever be as accurate as, say, one of my various Springers. Probably not because it's a flywheeler, but it's almost certainly one of my most accurate flywheelers at this point. And I really appreciate that. So far, I've only had one jam. It somehow managed to feed two darts in and shove one in under the other and then melt them together. So there was smoke coming out and it was terrifying because I, it was the first time I'd run it in an event. Um, haven't had that happen since, so I don't know if it was a fluke, bad darts, or, or what went on, but um, hopefully it doesn't do that too often. This dark does fold and it's held with magnets. I don't know if I mentioned that magnets there on the side, which is pretty snazzy. It's got solid sling mounts in two locations. I use this one uh, just because that works for me. Pretty, pretty awesome. Um, the form factor is very much, uh, everyone keeps saying it looks like an Evo Scorpion. I, I wouldn't know, I'm not a huge uh, gun nut, but uh, I do like the form factor. I understand why they went with it. I'm, I'm glad it is very much bright orange. Uh, this is one that I probably would never take to somewhere like Fort Borst and probably would never run it in an HVZ, but I definitely don't mind using it here at my arena or in um, 5v5 because it's a much more contained location. Um, so yeah, really, really cool blaster. Gavin Fuzzy definitely hit this one out of the park. 
Um, I've, I've admired and loved his work for years, uh, ever since the SPAMP. Obviously, SBF is SPAMP, but flywheel. And uh, he took his time and he put out just an absolutely gorgeous project. The, the simple amount of detailing, there's so much detailing on the shell, there's, you know, uh, diamond plate looking stuff, there's, you know, just little greebles and dots, and it just, it just makes it all come together. You know, the diamond plate there, the, uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's supposed to be an auxiliary hourglass, but it sure looks like one. Pretty sure that's just a, a common shape they put on things, the, the GF. Gavin Fuzzy there, and, and then on the stock, there's also more greebling, and it is an extendable stock, uh, a solid stock as well. Very, very cool. So, I, I do believe I have gushed enough, and Swamp Cat demands attention. But, uh, my thanks to Gavin Fuzzy. I did, I did pay for this, or at least I, I paid for some. I paid some. I don't know that it was the full price. Yeah, I may have gotten a discount. But my thanks to Gavin Fuzzy just for building this. There has been that void in, in, in the hobby since FDL closed down, and uh, this is the closest thing I have seen or that I've gotten my hands on, and it's it's nice. It's nice to have that again, and it's just a, a fabulous blaster. So my thanks to Gavin Fuzzy for this, and my thanks to you guys for watching. Ha!